Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be doing a trying new makeup. You know, he's off work, just really cramping my style. So he came in here and sat down, so I said, we're just gonna go ahead with the video. So, today look, we're gonna- Don't look good? You've looked better before, but. Today we're gonna be doing a trying new makeup and catching up because I haven't been posting. Hello. <laughs> Are you done? Dude, you're so bright in here. I know. Yeah, I'm done. I'm out of here. I'll let you fucking do you. All right. Later, Gator. Oh, God, about to drop my drink. Later, Gator. Hey, guys. Welcome back to my channel. <laughs> So today we're just gonna be doing a trying new makeup, but I wanna make it chill and catch up with you guys. Maybe explain why I haven't been posting as much. I did get my REM Beauty order in, so I wanna play around with the lip products. Also want to test out the Beauty Blender Bounce. This is their skin tint I purchased during the sale. I also have the Melt Blush Palette I wanna play with. I've been playing around with this off camera and love it. I have another Makeup by Mario lip liner I purchased, and then the Viseart Four Pan Palette that I purchased. Some other things like Glamnetic Lashes and who knows what else. We're just gonna play around. So I wanna just basically catch up and do a chatty get ready with me, but try some new products because I have so much to try and I really just haven't been filming, so I wanna catch you up on why and maybe include some new products today. So if you like trying new makeup videos, please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel out. I will link all the products I talk about today down below in my description box. If you're new here, I hope you subscribe and let's go ahead and begin. So I went ahead and zoomed you in. We're gonna start off with this Viseart palette. So this is the Viseart Petites Fours palette in the colorway Praline. I bought two of these from Cult Beauty during Black Friday sales, and I've been using this one off camera. It really is just so easy, and I wanna do something very easy today. I do wanna try out the Glamnetic Lashes on camera, so I wanna kinda of focus on other products. But I'm just gonna start out with the matte shade in here. So there's three shimmers and a matte. My only complaint would be that these two shimmers are very very similar, like super similar, that I'm kind of like, could we not have done something different? But you're gonna get a very similar look every time you use this, so if you do like these colors, which I personally do, you're gonna get just like a bronzy, you know, champagne gold eye. So I just wish maybe they would have made like one of these a little bit, you know, different in tone, but for the price, I think this was $25, and then I did get a discount, so it's really not, you know, crazy expensive. And again, if you like these shades, you're gonna get the looks that you enjoy pretty much every time you use it. I am gonna start out with the matte shade and I'm just gonna put this on the outer portion of my eyes. You can see that it has nice pigment. I feel so rusty filming, it's actually unreal. Like I haven't filmed a chatty talking video in my studio, ooh, maybe two weeks. I also do have my original lens on my camera, which is not what I usually film with, so I'm hoping that the footage looks good because when you change your lens, you kind of have to change everything around and changing the settings is always super stressful. I was having such a hard time with my uh, lens that I used previously, which is more of a high-tech lens and it gives you that really beautiful background that's blurred. And I used it for a long time, but recently it's really been giving me trouble with autofocusing, specifically when I would do like product shots or try to hold products up or show swatches to the point where it would take me like an hour to do product shots for a haul or something like that. This is what happens when I try to do product shots. So it says it's focusing, but it's not. Like literally, this is why I wanna scream. And I would just get so frustrated. I'd have to put the uh, product in front of the camera, then try to get it to focus, then move it, then put it back, then move it, then put it back, then turn my camera off, then turn it back on. It was just becoming to the point where I was just getting like angry and not wanting to take product shots. So I went back to the standard lens, which is what comes with the Canon. But with that, it's just different. I'm not used to the way that it zooms and I'm not used to how small it is because my lens that I typically use is like pretty heavy and big. The one on the actual Canon is very small. 
just all the settings are different so hopefully they're all right and hopefully I don't you know hate the footage or struggle with this lens I'm just not used to it I mean these blend beautifully this is my first time I think with Viseart shadows I have a blush palette I really like from them but shadow wise I never really got into them I think they were just really expensive and the color stories didn't really speak to me but these little four pan palettes I wanted to give them a try. So now I'm gonna grab this shimmery bronze shade and I'm gonna be using a Smith 235. I really love this brush because it's flat but also fluffy. So I like to apply a shimmer sort of on the lid and then blend it into the crease. So just sort of sweep it on like this and then it kind of blends into the crease, which is what I prefer. I either like using a brush like this or I like doing like a half cut crease. I'm just not very good at just, I don't know, applying a shimmer to the lid without blending it into the crease. I feel like it looks unfinished on me, just the way my eyes are. Plus I do tend to prefer more of like a subdued shimmer, I guess. I don't really know why, but I actually really prefer matte looks. If you notice a lot of the times when I'm filming and I did my makeup off camera, I really wear a lot of just like matte looks. I'm more of a liner lashes type of gal. And then once I've applied that, I just go in with that brush from before, just blend everything out. So that's basically it for the top of the lids. I just wanna keep it easy. This is what I would do pretty much most days. But I wanna use this new product that I purchased from Glamnetic. So I purchased a bunch of their magnetic lashes. So I have these sort of half lashes, just bought a ton of them. And then I also got this Duo Magnetic Felt Tip Eyeliner Pen. Now felt tips are not my favorite, but I don't like the magnetic liners that are really goopy or almost really liquidy, sort of like a lash glue. I feel like I don't have any control. So I wanted to try this because it's more of like a pen liner, which is my preference, even though I do prefer brush tip. I really haven't found a brush tip pen that is magnetic. If you guys know of one, comment down below because I've been looking. But this one has brown on one side and black on the other, which I thought was really nice because brown can be a softer look. Look. and I've been using this uh, a few times and I really like it it's a little bit different than lash glue I wouldn't say that I feel uh, as confident in terms of long term with this just because I feel like lash glue really sets my lashes down but for filming or when I just want to throw some lashes on and not worry about you know covering the band of the glue and all that I am enjoying it and I also like the fact that because you're not getting lash glue all over your lashes you don't really have to clean them like the ones that I've worn a few times I feel like they look brand new and I've already worn them three times this is the style that I've worn so far it's called shameless now these are not corner lashes they're actually like full lashes but I did cut them and then there's also these little things in here called anchors which are interesting but I actually feel like they're helpful especially for my inner corner they kind of anchor your lash so they go underneath the lash and they really like adhere the magnets I'll show you guys I think do these have anchors I don't know actually I don't think there's anchors on the half lashes but it's this little thing right here and you just kind of put it underneath the lash and it just adheres to the magnets on the actual lash so it's like extra security if you will so I feel like that's definitely helpful because I feel like I do have an issue with my inner corner wanting to lift for whatever reason specifically with magnetic lashes even worse than lash glue. So today I think I'm going to use the brown side of this liner just to do a softer look, but I want to swatch it for you. So this is what the brown swatch is like. And then the black, I wouldn't say these are as dark as your typical liner. I mean, that does look pretty dark, but I feel like it's not as easy to use this as it would be your regular liner. Like for me it would be the uh, Huda Beauty one or the KVD vegan tattoo liner. I just like the brush tip more, but I can get the job done. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in with the brown side and I'm gonna do like a half wing. And then I usually pull in this way, but sometimes lately I've been doing it the opposite. So 
so that's what my wing is looking like. If I have to clean it up underneath, we'll definitely do that. But I wanna go in next with the half lashes. So these are in the style queen. I feel like these will be a lot easier only because half lashes really just tend to be easier in general because you don't have it poking the inner portion of your eye. And before I put them on, I am going to put some mascara on. Now this was the problem I had before with the other uh, magnetic liner that I used. It was so goopy, it got like all in my lashes and this one doesn't do that. So I really do like this uh, liner. I feel like it's just the easiest I've tried. So I went ahead and did the other eye. I wanna go ahead and apply just one more coat of this really on the lash line where I'm gonna be putting the magnetic lashes and then we will put them on and see if they stick. Okay, so I did that second coat. I want to apply the lashes. I have these like rogue hairs, like lashes. They're for my top lash line, but they don't wanna like go up. They want to hang down. These ones right here, like I can never get them in the lash curler either. But I mean, it is super easy. So I feel like if you struggle with magnetic lashes or you wanna try them, I would recommend trying something like this. You could also do, excuse me, <clears throat> my voice is going. You could also do like your regular liner and then just use this where you're gonna apply the lash. All right, so the lashes are on. I feel like it's pretty easy and straightforward. You just wanna make sure that you do apply enough of this at the lash line to kind of have the magnet stick to. I will say I feel like Glamnetic is pricey, like really pricey. But I do feel like because there's not like glue residue all over these, I feel like they're like good as new even after using them multiple times. So I've been enjoying this. It's expensive, but I feel like it's just really easy if I wanna throw lashes on and I don't wanna worry about covering up my lash glue or the lash band. So let's move on to face. I'm gonna be going in with my Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream. I repurchased this during the sale and I love it. So onto the chatty portion. I feel like I'm always bad at like trying new makeup and chatting. Uh, my mental health has just been in the dumps basically since December and I really don't know like what triggered it. I feel like November was super busy. Tons of sales, just the Sephora sale, tons of new releases, content to do. So I really worked super hard in November. And then I just feel like December hit and I've just been feeling anxious, really down, it's really dark out, super early. I don't know, I just feel like I lost all of my like motivation. I had quite a bit of triggering um, related to my dogs, crying a lot, and I just don't even know why. Uh, I actually broke out super bad too, like really bad because I picked it my skin and I just wasn't feeling good about myself. I have a lot of like body image issues like a lot, not just body, like just the way that I look and I can really like go up and down. Like one day I feel confident, the next day I feel like just not good about myself. And so I'm trying to work with my uh, psychiatrist to actually get into counseling just to talk about my issues. I think it's really difficult because I am on camera for a living. I feel like when I don't feel good about myself, coming on camera is like really uncomfortable for me because I feel like it's all surrounding like my mood and the way I look. So if I feel like I look bad and my mood is really down from depression, it's really uncomfortable sometimes. So if I don't post, usually like something's going on in my family or my mental health is like in the dumps. For my T-zone, I wanna try out this YSL blotting lotion. This is a matte primer from their new line. I actually did an ad with them on the skin tint for this line as well as the like glowy primer. But I bought this as well because I really wanted to try it out. It wasn't like in the ad or anything, but I thought that I could use both, really the glowy on the outer portion of my face and then this blotting one in my T-zone. So this is what it looks like. And because we're going in with that beauty blender tint, I thought a matte in the T-zone might be good. So yeah, I've just been really struggling and when I'm struggling, I sort of just retreat and I've just not been feeling good and I hate that. I feel like seasonal depression gets me every year and there's like nothing that I can do about it. 
I also recently did go to get my Botox in my masseter. I get Botox in my masseters like every three or four months because I have TMJ. I grind like crazy. Like I will really grind and it hurts really bad. So I get it in my masseters to calm my jaw from clenching. And then I also get a little bit in my forehead, but I also did a little bit in my lips. Now I haven't done anything in my lips for two and a half years because I was really happy with the size. When I look back, I went way overboard with my lips at times, fillers in general. I feel like, again, it's a slippery slope when you're on camera and people nitpick you. You get a little here, a little there, and then you go overboard. So I've definitely been there, but I really like the size of my lips, but because I hadn't had any filler for two and a half years, my lips were sort of pulling to one side. I'm dominant on this side of my face, and I knew that before doing filler, when you do filler, they kind of analyze your face and what will work. So in the past, I've tried to like overfill this side of my mouth to kind of make it even, and that just ended up looking heavy and not working. So lately, I've been really struggling with lining my lips because I feel like my lips were shifting. Like all of a sudden, it was becoming really difficult to like apply lipstick in an even manner. So I went and saw somebody that I've seen many times years ago and we basically just did the tiniest amount right in my cupid's bow right here and then right here just to even out and get some symmetry so I am swollen and I have a little bruise here if you can see that. We both agreed that overfilling or adding a ton of filler really wasn't going to be helpful because it's not going to make you more symmetrical. So we did a little bit of Botox a lip flip which I've had before where they essentially just put a little bit uh, above your lip and it just kind of lifts your lip. So hopefully it'll just like pull this side to make it more even. So it's like one of those things that when I think about it and when I talk to like Ian about it or even my friends, they're like, what are you talking about? But when you're on camera and you have to edit yourself, you notice things about yourself. It's really not healthy to be honest. Things that you would never notice in person and that's definitely one of the cons of YouTube is just watching yourself back and nitpicking everything about yourself. So my lips were really bothering me to the point where like when I would be doing tutorials or just trying to do, you know, trying new makeup, I was wiping off my lip liner like four to five times because I just could not get it even because of the way my lips were shifting. So I finally made an appointment. I'm glad I did because I feel like once it settles, it should be easier. And even since then, it's been easier to line my lips. But it's just one of those things where you nitpick yourself and and I don't know, it's like this thing of perfection and you feel like if something is off or, you know, you don't feel good about breaking out or whatever it is, at least for me, it really affects me. I really have body image issues that stem back from when I was a teenager. Um, not even just body, looks, everything about the way I look. Just very sensitive about it, very hard on myself. Um, so I'm sure some of you can relate with that. So I've just been struggling with that and then losing my dogs. I don't know, just having feelings of like all rushing back of like grief. It's just been not a good couple weeks. So I was trying to give myself grace and just like, I can't push myself and just make myself be fake and film. So I just needed to really unplug and that's what I've done. So I've been getting a bunch of messages from you guys and like comments and I feel bad now. I've been missing you guys and I feel bad that I haven't been posting but I'm hopefully back to it. I hope that this uh, lens is okay because that's like another stressor for me. I'm like, if I can't get this lens right, that's gonna stress me out. So hopefully this lens and lighting is okay. So I've just been in a major funk and I feel like it's down or a little bit depressing to talk about, but I just wanna be real with you guys. And if you're feeling that too, you're not alone. I feel like I get like this every winter. It's just the seasonal depression. I do feel like, Sometimes I'm letting you guys down and, and I get down on myself when I don't work. I'm not good at just not working. And if I could edit all day, I would do that. But it's like when you feel like a complete piece of trash, trying to get on camera, at least for me, is almost impossible. I just struggle really hard with it. So I just wanna say thank you for giving me like a week off or just, I'm doing, you know, I've only done like a couple uploads in December, which I know in November I was like uploading a lot, but it's just like maybe I was like going so hard that I just like burn out. I really don't know but hopefully I'm back to it and I also want to say a huge thank you for all the love on my Walmart haul I cannot believe it like the comments just everything I'm just so thankful it was my first clothing haul I hope to do more and that was like really nerve-wracking for me again just body image issues and not being an extra small you know like hey I wear a large and like being okay with that I feel like on YouTube so much it's like 
you know, I'm in a two or an extra small. And like, it just makes me personally feel like, wow, like I don't look the same as those other people. So yeah, I just feel like it was a really good experience. I'm glad that I did it and I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. I have some new subscribers from that video. So thank you for subscribing and I'm hoping to do more fashion content, you know, mixed in with my makeup. All right, I need to stop rambling because I'm not good at multitasking. <laughs> this is what we know. So I'm going to be using the new Beauty Blender Bounce Always On Radiant Skin Tint. Now I wasn't gonna pick this up because I typically am not a fan of skin tints, although the new YSL one that I did an ad with, I am shocked. I already ordered another shade for like lighter days. Usually skin tints to me are very thick, uh, sticky, and they don't last and they don't have enough coverage because I have redness and I have acne scarring. But a lot of you guys recommended this Beauty Blender one. I feel like everybody's loving it. So I ended up picking it up. I think they did like 20% off Beauty Blender. Sephora's been doing like random percentages off. So I picked up the shade Medium 1, and I wanna read a little bit about it. It says it's a light coverage, radiant finish, a skin tint that hydrates with light, medium, buildable coverage and a radiant finish. How to use, it just says shake and then use a Beauty Blender. Of course they're gonna say that, it's their brand. So let's go ahead and try this out. All right, so it's pretty liquidy. So we're gonna go in with a beauty blender and see what kind of coverage we can get here. Okay, so far it's looking like good coverage. So that's my issue typically with like a skin tint. I just need like, I need the ability to build it to a light medium. And I feel like a lot of the skin tints that I've tried, it's very sheer or light and it just doesn't cover up you know, or even out my skin tone, and then I feel like I almost look blotchy. I think because of my redness. That's looking pretty good, to be honest. Very thin formula. I wanna see how this wears. The YSL one has a thicker formula, like when you squeeze it out, but on the skin it feels very lightweight. And that one I actually prefer with your fingers, which is very rare. Usually when a skin tint says use your fingers, to me it ends up being very just streaky, but the YSL one doesn't. I feel like this probably has more coverage than the YSL. The YSL one is like very much, I wanna throw this on with my fingers, you know, put some brow gel in and be out the door. This one I feel like, just upon my first impression, it's got a little bit more coverage. All right, so this is what the Beauty Blender skin tint looks like. I have to say pleasantly surprised. I really like it. I like that it is thin, so it's not gunky or heavy, but overall I like the coverage because I feel like you could sheer it out if you'd like to, but I used about two and a half droppers to get this coverage, which for me is comfortable. I feel like it's covering all my redness. It's not completely covering you know, my acne spots, but it's enough for me to be comfortable. I don't have a new concealer that will go with this. I do have one that I purchased from Holly Boone's line, but it's like super full coverage, which I don't think would necessarily work with this look. So I'm just gonna use my ABH Magic Touch Concealer. Now this one is like a medium buildable coverage. But the uh, one that I got from the Holly Boone brand, I really like it, but it's like full beat coverage. Sometimes a little too much, like you can see the line. So I just thought I would go for something that's kind of medium coverage. Also, I am planning to do the best makeup of the year. I really hope I can get it uploaded before the end of the year. I feel like it's just so tough because I'm behind because I just haven't been filming. And then we have the holidays and I have three Christmases to go to. So I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to, you know, get all of this done. So I'm gonna go ahead and set now with the Haley's Beauty Powder mixed with my Huda. They're both incredibly smoothing and the Huda is just more brightening. So sometimes I use like the Huda more so under the eyes and then I'll use the Haley's Beauty like the rest of the face. So I went ahead and set my face. I did notice some patching and lifting around my hairline and a little bit of funkiness around my nose. It's one of those that I feel like it's sticky and tacky until you set it down, which again is something that I see with a lot of skin tints. I'm gonna go in with my Jouer Powder in Dark. Uh, we've been through it. I'm gonna use a Refer 05 brush. Just gonna bronze the skin up. I have the new palette from Manny uh, Lunar Beauty but I wanna test that out when I can really do like full, full glam. Like, I mean, I'm doing full glam right now. I don't know what I'm saying. I just didn't know how that 
Beauty Blender skin tint was gonna be. So I'm definitely gonna try out the Major Dimension Contour Palette in an upcoming Trying to Make Up. So for blush, I wanna use this Melt Palette. I got this in PR when this collection launched. And honestly, I just didn't have time to do the video. I feel like in November, it was crazy with the sales. There was so much new, I was trying to keep up. But I do want to use the products in videos. I'm gonna separate them because there's some wild colors in there, like the eyeshadow palette, the lip colors, everything's really like in your face. The blush palette, however, is gorgeous. I've been using it a lot and really enjoying it. I haven't used every shade, but this shade up here is like baby doll cheeks. This is like a burnt terracotta, like orange color. And then you've got some more neutral. Some of them have shimmer. I love the melt blush formula in powder form and in cream. So I was super excited to get this. Just to show you guys, I'm gonna start off with this neutral shade here. Just the detailing on this collection is so gorgeous. I'm using a Refer 24. So this is more of a kind of everyday neutral shade. Now this does have a little bit of a glow to it. It doesn't look like it in the pan, this shade specifically, but it does. And then also these two do as well, but these three I don't believe do at all. So you kind of get a mixture So I'm applying this pretty heavy just to show you the color. So this is like an everyday color. And then to punch it up, I think I am gonna go into this really kind of orangey terracotta shade. This is pigmented, so you want to dip in one time. I mean, look at that. And like really tap your brush off because this one is like I'm barely touching. It's very pigmented, so I'm gonna keep it a little bit more back on the cheek. So I'm just adding a little bit more just so you can really see the color. So here is the Melt Blush Palette. I love it, I mean I love blushes and I feel like this is the year of just blushes in general. I've just been enjoying this for when I want baby doll cheeks, I go in with that really beautiful pink shade. And then if I want more of a sun-kissed, I use this one and then these are more neutral. But I'm still playing around with it and I'll keep using it in more videos so you guys can see it in action. So for highlighter, I wanted to use a new one I picked up from House Labs. If you saw my Black Friday haul, I grabbed some of their new collection. This is the gel powder highlighter in Luce de Sol, I think is how you say it. So this reminds me so much of like MAC. It just looks like one of those baked gel or even like the ABH Omrizi. I'm hoping it won't be too dark for me because it does look a little bit dark and this was the only shade. I'm gonna be using a Sonia G Sculpt 2 because this is really great at picking up highlighters like this. And we're just gonna start applying. So it's definitely golden. I'm gonna take some down the center of my nose. So it's definitely really high shine. I do think the color is a little bit deeper than what I would personally like. I don't see much of like a brightening effect on my skin tone personally. Sort of wish they would have come out with like maybe three different shades, just so you could have kind of hit all skin tones. I don't know if you're lighter than me, if you'd be able to use this. It is accentuating my texture a little bit. I think I brought it down a little too far. I'm telling you, I'm rusty with makeup. I haven't really done my makeup, like really using new products and trying out, you know, a full face for a couple weeks now. So I feel like it looks all right, but I do feel like I pulled it down a little too far. So I'd have to try it again and do more of like a targeted application. That was probably my fault. Okay, so for lips, I did purchase another one of the Makeup by Mario lip liners. I really like these. I have three now. The other two I have are a little bit darker. So I got a lighter shade, and this is in the color Dimitri. And I like these because they have a wooden lip pencil on one side, and they actually have a brush that you can use to kind of blend it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and line my lips, and then for my actual lips, I am gonna be using the REM Beauty products because I do have a lip stain. I also have gloss and lipstick. All right, so that shade is a little bit light, and that's kind of the issue I was having with the Mario lip liners. I felt like they were either really light or they were really dark. I'm gonna take a little bit of Morphe Sweet Tea 
just to add a little bit more dimension. So to finish off this look, I finally got in my lip products from REM Beauty. I ordered actually two lip stain markers, but only one of them showed up and it really took forever to ship. So I have the lip stain marker and this is in the shade Popular. I ordered another one, but it didn't come, which is interesting because it said my whole order was going to ship once that one uh, lip stain marker came in and then it never came in. So I don't really know what's going on with that, but this is what it looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and swatch it. This one looks like a, I would say like a berry pink. Now I use a lip stain marker pretty much every day. I know a lot of people don't. Cheryl actually got this, or she got a lip stain marker and she was like, how do you use it? Cause I feel like they're promoting it or the way that it kind of appears is that you would put it all over, which you definitely can, but I just put it in the center of my lip. So I just go like this. This one's definitely uh, more purple pink. And I just apply it like that. I feel like I just like the way it looks under lipstick. I don't know why I've always done, we call it the popsicle lip, but I did pick up two of her lipsticks as well. Now I will say I like the packaging on this. I got the lightest shades bubbly and also roller skates. They look like they have this really pretty matte feel to them. So right here is roller skates. This one just looks like a light peachy nude. I think the one bubbly that I got is a little bit more on the pink side. Yeah, so you have bubbly here, roller skates here. Bubbly is just a little more pink. I'm flipping you off, so there's that. I'm gonna go on with roller skates. Uh, I like the packaging on this more so than a lot of the other products I've tried. So they sent me a PR package, but they only sent me like five things. And again, I bought a lot more, so let's go ahead feels very creamy like when you apply it there's no tug Ooh, it smells good smells like a mac maybe so that is what the lipstick looks like i mean i feel like it's very much a color i would use but i also got two lip glosses so the lip gloss packaging i'm a little confused by it looks like it's gonna have a doe foot but when you take the top off it's a squeezy tube not really loving the packaging on that now they did send me the clear plumping gloss when i did my first video and i did like it surprisingly i felt like it smelled good and it really felt nice on the lips but i'm interested to see how this differs in terms of formula i don't know if there's really any difference other than these being i guess tinted but the one that she sent before was just like in sort of like a juicy tubes kind of tube and this one i don't know it's just weird packaging to me so here is the first shade these feel very sticky this is in the shade waterfalls like it feels very tacky and sticky when i am uh, swatching it. I don't mind that. I actually like sticky, but I know a lot of people don't. And then the other one I got was Pink Razor. This one's just more of a cool toned pink shade. They have a good amount of pigment to them. I'm going to go in with the Waterfalls. Is that what it's called? This one that is more like peachy. Okay, it has a minty smell. Applying it, it's kind of like, mm, that's weird. I feel like I'm getting a glossy finish, but not like an intense one. And I feel like if I apply too much, it might be one of those that gets like goopy. So the overall lip that we came out with, I think is really pretty. I just don't know if I love the packaging or formula on the gloss, but again, just a first impression. So I'll have to try all these products out more and I'll give you my final thoughts. And then to finish off, I'm going to use this YSL New Dewy Mist. So when I did my ad with them, I just bought some products to try out beforehand. And I didn't actually use this in my ad, but I've been enjoying it. It's just very dewy, gives you a really glowy look. And because we're doing more of like that skin tint, I thought that I could just demo it for you guys. So it has a nice mister. It's one of those that you have to kind of get close to actually like feel it. It has a really subtle scent, like nothing overpowering, which sort of surprised me because a lot of times like high-end brands like to really throw the fragrance in, but it does give you a nice glow. It's one of those that it's kind of like a MAC Fix Plus. So I've been using it on the daily when I don't really need, you know, that mattifying lockdown look. 
All right, guys, so I think that is everything for this trying new makeup. I really just wanted to check in with you guys and film a video again, and hopefully I'll get back to my normal uploading schedule. But I wanna go over my thoughts on the products, starting out with the Viseart palette. I really like it. It blends beautifully, it's very easy to use. It's just one of those that if you are traveling, you just wanna throw this in your bag. It's just convenient. You're not gonna get a ton of different looks with it. You're gonna get essentially what I did today, but this is the kind of look that I like and it's very easy. I use two shades and I'm done and I like the formula on this as well. It's my first Viseart eyeshadow uh, formula that I've tried. So I have another palette that I purchased. It has more golds and like a black in it. I haven't used it yet, but I'll be using that soon. Still too early to tell on this YSL primer. This is the blotting lotion. So this is the matte one. I do have the glowy one that I really love, but the matte one I'm still testing out. And again, this would be a great test because I am using a skin tint that's a little bit more dewy. First impression on the skin tint, pretty good. It is very similar in the way that it looks and behaves to the YSL one. And I say this one has a little bit more coverage. The YSL one I feel like is kind of smooth on with your fingers and be out the door. This one could kind of go both ways. You could do just a little bit for every day just to kind of even things out. Or you could really, you know, build this to a medium coverage like I did and wear it with full glam. So we'll see how this actually wears, but my first impression on this was pretty good. Really enjoying this Glamnetic Liner Duo. I feel like it makes magnetic lashes so much easier for those of us that struggle with just certain types of eyeliner pens. I like to have a pen that has a tip on it. Felt tip isn't my favorite, but it's doable. If you know of a brush tip, let me know, but I just am not good with the, uh, I guess, really flimsy ends that aren't in a pen form. So I really like this. I feel like my lashes are secured on. I don't feel like they're going anywhere and it just makes putting on lashes easier and quicker. Absolutely loving the Melt Cosmetics blush palette. Today I went for the warmer tones, but a lot of times I go for this really beautiful just baby doll pink. I just think this is such a gorgeous palette. I love all the color differences in here, and I just love Melt overall. I feel like they are just knocking it out of the park. Packaging on this in the entire collection is gorgeous. I mean, I'm a blush fanatic, so I'm not really surprised. Uh, unsure a little bit on this House Labs. I don't hate it, but I don't know if I'm loving it. I feel like it's just a smidge too deep for me personally. It's deeper than the Omrizi ABH, so I just don't know if I would use this a ton, maybe more so in like the summertime for more of that like all over glow. I also probably applied too much, but overall I like it. I just don't know if it's going to become a top favorite. And then lip products. I love the Mario lip liners. I'm just having a hard time figuring out what the shades actually look like. I feel like this shade is great for every day, but when I want to do more of like an ombre lip look, the other two that I have are very dark. I kind of want something in between, but the formula on this is great, and I do like that you get the brush so you can really blend it in before it sets. So I've been a big fan of these, and I actually do like the lip stain marker. I mean, I'm a lip stain girl, so it would be great if my other one would show up because I did buy two, and they said that it was going to come. Like, they refunded me, but they were like, we're still going to send it, but I still haven't gotten shipping. But I feel like a lot of people don't know how to use a lip stain. You could always just use it all over, but for me, it's just something to put in the center of your lips to give that popsicle look. So I love this. I hope I can get the other one in the mail sometime. And then in terms of the lipstick from REM Beauty, I love the packaging on it. I think it's super cute. And I like the colors I got. They're very basic nude colors. I got one pinky, one peachy. It doesn't tug, it's very pigmented, and I don't feel like it's gunking up or anything like that. It smells like a MAC lipstick. So happy with this overall. Uh, not sure if I'm loving the glosses. I don't really love the packaging of it. I feel like this has the ability to get super gunky, which I feel like it already is. It's one of those that you could probably Probably squeeze like a huge glob out or not enough. I'm just not feeling the packaging. Um, it has a minty smell and I can feel a little bit of mintiness on my lips, sort of like a like the Buxom lip glosses, maybe a little bit more than that, but I'm just not loving the packaging on this, and I don't know if I really love the formula either so far, just because I feel like, I don't know, it's a little bit goopy, but not as high shine as I would like. 
And then the YSL Dewy Mist. This is just a great staple dewy mist. It's one of those that's not sticky. Sometimes the dewy mists or the really like glowy ones have glycerin in them and they're very tacky. This one's very much like the Morphe or the uh, MAC Fix Plus. Obviously the Morphe has the continuous spray. This one just has, you know, like the typical Urban Decay spray. But I would say it's definitely more fine than that. One of those that you really kind of get up close to get it on your skin. But it does give you a nice glow and kind of set your powders in. So I'm liking it so far, but it's definitely a splurge. So that concludes everything for this trying new makeup and really just getting back on camera to film. Hopefully my lighting and everything's okay. I'm gonna have to play around with it and if I do need to adjust anything, I will do that. I hope you guys enjoyed me trying some new products out and just updating you on what's been going on with me. I have a ton of stuff to try out so I feel like trying new makeup videos are gonna be coming as well as the best of the year. I have my products listed, I just have to do that video as well. So hopefully I can get that up before the end of the year. I wanna know, what are you guys doing for Christmas? Uh, what are your plans? I have three Christmases to go to, so I feel like I'm gonna be quite busy, but I'll be seeing all my family and Ian's family, so we'll be doing that. I thought about maybe vlogging a little bit, so I'll keep you guys updated on that, but if you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe. I will link all the products that I talked about today down below in my description box. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.